Hello everybody, my name is Walter and this is the second episode of my Redstone Tips and Tricks series. In this episode I want to show you a rather simple trick that can be used to treat non-tileable designs essentially as if they were tileable. But first a quick recap for those who have no idea what I'm talking about. A non-tileable design is a design that works just fine until you build an identical copy right next to it. At that point the circuits will interfere with each other and will not work or might even completely break. A tileable design is the opposite. Here you can place them right next to each other without any air gaps and activate and deactivate them as you wish since the circuits are and remain completely independent. Modular expandable designs are a bit of a subgroup of that where you have one module triggering the next module usually with some kind of control circuit for the required signals at the very start. And with that, let's actually get to the trick, which is very simple because it's just mirroring. Now, how does this work? Well, let's say we have a contraption with a left slice and a right slice, and if it's wider than two blocks, some middle slices. If we were to mirror this, the right slice is now on the left side and the left on the right. And you might already see what's going on here. If you have one copy and a mirrored copy, those two slices here look very similar. And if they are identical, you can overlap them. And that's what I refer to as pseudo-tiling, where you mirror every other copy and then overlap them. And you can not only do this on the right side, but also on the left side. And um, basically, you end up with a repeating pattern of non-mirrored, mirrored, non-mirrored, non and so on. The whole thing is called pseudo-tiling because, contrary to tiling, the circuits since they overlap, are not independent, so you need to power everything at the same time or you may run, may run into some timing issues and strange behavior. Example comes a bit later. Another thing that might happen is, um, well, the design might become tileable. Usually in a non-tileable design, the left side doesn't really like to be next to the right side, but potentially the right side doesn't have a problem with another right side or the left with another left. And if that is the case, you can, instead of overlapping them, just place them next to each other. In that case, the circuitry tends to be independent. So this is a form of true tiling. I call it usually mirror tiling. And um, here you can fill around with the timing a bit and have a bit of a free play here. Anyway, let's talk a bit about some examples. So let's start with the pseudo tiling. What I've used here is the very design from the beginning of this video. And here you have the first copy, then the mirrored second copy with the overlap here, then the third copy and the fourth copy, and you can see I'm going with this pseudo tiling here. As already mentioned, it's important that you trigger everything at the same time, or you might get some strange behavior. As you can see here, the swappers in the middle didn't really break, but they swapped it twice. And that's usually not what you want. So just make sure that you trigger everything at the same time. Besides of the possible time issues, there are some things that might make this trick non-viable. And that is the, because this trick depends on this slice and this slice being identical. Which is not the case if you have redstone components that are directional and go sideways. So for example, hoppers, droppers, uh, pistons, repeaters, comparators, observers, and so on. Or rail connections. If you flip them around, they are obviously not identical. Real connections, depending on the orientation of the build, might even change the connection in the T-junction and uh, everything might break. And in those cases, obviously, the designs are not identical and you cannot use pseudo tiling. You might get around the issue by rearranging the circuitry a bit, maybe moving the problematic ones to the center or maybe rotating them 90 degrees. But sometimes uh, it just doesn't work. A possible exception of this rule is uh, the redstone torch, because if you power those two at the same time, it doesn't really make much of a difference whether the torch is connected to this one or this one, it powers everything around it. The sole exception here is the block the torch is actually attached to. This usually makes no difference, but Essentially, the exception of this exception is if you have a block with causal connectivity below, so a piston, you can see, 
same situation as before, but now we have a piston below. Or if the block the torch is attached to is a redstone component and that's a full block and triggers an observer or similar. Because you can see here the circuitry would interfere with each other and uh, would not work properly. Another thing to keep in mind is that you still need to power and trigger the circuitry. So if your inputs are in the overlapping slice, it can get quite difficult to actually reach them. So uh, that's one other thing to be aware of. And finally, if you have honey and slime blocks, you should be aware of the 12 block push limit for pistons, uh, since uh, you might get quite easily over that limit and the design may not work. A possible workaround is alternating between slime blocks and honey blocks within the different copies, uh, but this will not work if you either need the slime block for redstone power transmission, or if the pistons that move them are directly in the overlapping slice. And with that, let's get to the mirror tiling. So here I have a slightly modified version of this design over there. Here we have the first copy, and here we have the mirrored second copy. And you can see there's nothing in between the two circuits that will interfere with each other, so I can trigger them with pretty much any kind of delay, and everything will work nicely. What you can also see here is you can also combine pseudo-tiling and mirror-tiling. So here I have pseudo-tiling, here I have mirror-tiling. When it comes to pseudo-tiling, the same is true as before, so same timing and so on. Nevertheless, there are a few things where this tileability may not work properly. This is primarily when you have redstone crosses or redstone straights from front to back, because when you connect them, they will change their shape and will not power all the blocks they powered before. So here, the redstone cross powers all of the blocks around and the straight the blocks front and back. Here, the corners power no blocks around and the straight only the blocks to the side. Potential workarounds are using target blocks or maybe replacing some of the redstone wire with full blocks. But this totally depends on the circuitry. And the, another thing that might happen or can cause problems is if you have full redstone components that again trigger, for example, observers. Um, so you can see I can activate those two here independent. In the case where I put them right next to each other, they are no longer independent. And uh, this means that the circuitry now interfere again. Simple workaround in this case is going back to the trick with the pseudo tiling, meaning you power everything at the same time. And with that, we've reached the end of this episode about pseudo and mirror tiling. I hope you enjoyed it and well, see ya.